Welcome to Virtualize Everything. Today we're going to be looking at the process to create a Docker server here inside of a Proxmox container on our Proxmox server. So there's many different ways to run Docker here on Proxmox and a lot of people actually will run it natively on the server. I prefer not to do this because what it's going to do is not integrate well with the operating system and your web interfaces and stuff also are unaware of Docker. Instead, what I like to do is actually spin up a separate container or VM depending on what I'm going to be running for each independent Docker instance. And I know Docker is meant to be a containerization, so we're adding an extra layer to that and maybe possibly drawing more resources. But the resource taxation on a Proxmox server for running a container is very low. So we're able to spin this up, not really use any more resources, and kind of keep Docker inside of an isolated container where, you know, root access and other things are more so isolated than they would be if Docker was installed directly on the machine. With that, let's look at get how to get a container image if you're new here to Proxmox and following this tutorial. So at the Proxmox web interface, when you first log into Proxmox, it's gonna look something like this. It might look more like this or a little bit different depending on exactly the login screen, but it'll look similar. You're definitely going to have this bar here on the left-hand side and your drive won't be as full as mine. But with that, let's select our local drive. Local is going to be your default location for storing ISOs and container images as well as backup files. Once we've selected that, we can go ahead and select CT templates. And here at CT templates, you won't have any of these like I do. But as you can see here, I don't have the newest version of Ubuntu out and the new LTS version. So I definitely want to go off. I want to grab that. So I'm using the latest LTS version of Ubuntu. So to do this, we can either bring in images from a URL off a website if we wanted to, or we can actually search Proxmox's repository for LXC or container images. To do that, we're gonna hit templates, and here we can use the search feature and enter Ubuntu, and you can see that we don't get all of the ones that I have up top here because they've been filtered out as they're not the newest versions and 22.04 is the newest LTS version. So let's go ahead and select the 24.04 or the new LTS version, and then we can press download. Now Proxmox will automatically download this and tell us task okay when it's finished just like it did here. At this point, if you haven't already done so, and this will run in the background if it's a large file, but you can go ahead and close this screen and you notice that it's automatically added to our stored templates. At this point, you can stay right in this screen, but I always feel more comfortable going back to my main server. And to go back to my main server, I can click PVE. And up top here, I can click Create CT, and I'm going to tell it the node. Now, if this was in a cluster, I could select multiple systems. This is not a cluster, there's only one server, so I can just use PVE. And by the way, PVE is the default name for a Proxmox server. Now I can give this a number as I choose. I'm going to go ahead and give this a, a number of a thousand one. I do this for housekeeping. This container will eventually become a template for some other projects and stuff. So I'm going to give it a name outside of my standard uh, container and VM numbering system. Now I can give it a name and we'll call this Ubuntu, and then I'm going to give it a dash. I can't enter periods 24 dash 04, so I know the operating system. And then I'll give it one more dash and I'll call it Docker. So I know that this particular operating system or container is running 24.04 and it's going to be running Docker. Now we can keep unprivileged. This means that we're not using root privileges on the main system and we can keep nesting checked. Now we can give this our password 
And I usually give my systems a pretty simple password to start because we're going to want to change this later on. I'm not going to be using SSH keys because I can interact with this with my web face. And that's my desired way to interact with this, at least starting out. So hitting next, I'm going to store my template in local where I downloaded it to, and then I can select template drop down and select the 24.04 image that we just downloaded. Again, pressing next, it's going to ask us to tell it how much disk space. I'm going to leave it as the default eight gigs. If I need to do this later where I need more storage, I can always go ahead and up this when I make my clone. And it's really straightforward. It's not like trying to add more disk space to a VM. So we'll press next. We're going to give it one CPU at this time. Memory, I'll leave it at 512. Remember, this is going to be really a template initially for this. So we want to keep everything low and small. And for our projects, we can go in and add this in later on. Pressing next again, my network, I'm going to choose DHCP. If I wanted to choose static, I could enter an IP address and then I need to in order to finish the IP address, enter the CIR notation, which for most networks that span from 192.1 to 192.254, it's going to be slash 24. If your network's different, I hope you know your CIDR notation, or you can go ahead and look it up or do the math to figure it out. And you'll also need to enter your gateway IP address as well. We're going to be using DHCP here today, so I don't need to fill out that information. So I'll go ahead and press next here, and I can enter DNS information if I need to change it. I don't believe I need to change this. So we're going to leave it alone here. Press next and hit finish. This will go ahead and create our actual machine here or LXC image that will go ahead and put Docker in towards the end of this tutorial. Again, we can close this screen out if we wanted to do some other things as this was running in the background, but you can see we've already gotten task OK all I was talking. So we can go ahead and close this window at this point and we have our machine up and running. Now here on the left hand side, you can see it created a new container called 1001 Ubuntu 2404 Docker. We can select that machine and it's going to give us some kind of statistics about it. We can also go in and look at some of the options and resources here if we needed bigger things. So like I said before, you can change how many CPU cores and how much RAM is available to this container. And you can do that right here. You can simply select memory, press edit and add or subtract this as well as change your swap file. And you could do the same thing here with cores by hitting edit adjusting. We can further tweak some options like networking by select network, pressing on or highlighting our network adapter, pressing edit and do things like assign it a static IP address if later on we decide it needs one. So then we can go down to options and here in options, we can set it to automatically boot when the system boots, configure some other things like privileged and whatnot. Going back to summary, we can see that we've actually written a few files to the disk as we made our changes and we can go ahead and press start. And at this point, we have two separate options. We can click console right here and that's going to give us a console window as this boots up where we can log in in a separate window or we could actually use the console feature here inside of the web browser. To log in, we're going to enter and then we're going to enter our password that we set up with the configuration of of the container. And that's why we said we were going to be very simple. You're going to want to add user accounts and whatnot to this after we get everything installed and set up and close out your root password, of course, for safety. And so there's no need to make a really complex password during that initiation, well, during the initial setup, because we're going to need to configure that afterwards. So here we're logged in as the root user. And the first thing I always do when I log into a new system running Linux is I'm going to run apt. And you can notice I'm not putting sudo here because I am logged in as the root user at this time. And then I'll do an update and it says I have 120 new packages to install. So I'll do an AP upgrade and I'll tell it dash Y so it auto accepts. 
I'll be back with you when this is done installing to look at more of the process of getting Docker up and running here. So I'll be back with you in just a second your time. Now that we're done doing the initial system updates and upgrades to all of the system dependencies that are built into our Docker container, or rather our LXC container that's running Ubuntu 24.04, it's time to head over to one of my favorite website or blog articles on installing Docker on a Raspberry Pi. And what really makes this really special is the script that these guys have written that makes this super simple for getting Docker up and running on a Linux system that is Debian based. And as you know, Ubuntu is very similar in the way it interacts with the world to Debian. So we can go ahead and use these steps here that are baked into this script that these guys at raspberrytips.com have gone and created so that we can install this super simple. So scrolling down through this article, we'll see the how to install Docker on a Raspberry Pi section. And we can go ahead and copy this script. Before we run this script though, we're going to need to install the Carl tool. So we can copy and paste Carl if we really want, I'm going to. And we can go ahead and run apt install, and we can go Carl, and we'll add that dash Y that we talked about, answer yes automatically press enter. This is going to go ahead and install Carl, the tool we're going to use to run this script that our friends have created. So now that we have Carl on our system, we'll head back to that website and we'll copy the entire script here by going copy and we're going to paste it in. This script's going to execute and when this script is done executing, we will have a working copy of Docker on this system ready to be used. There's a few more configuration steps I wanna take you through just for doing some initial security. It shouldn't be your end all be all security, but it's good initial security steps to take before you start actually using this server for Docker. So I'll be back with you when this script is done running to show you the next steps. So the Docker script is done running running and it gives us a nice little printout telling us about what's installed and everything and a good information about running uh, running docker rootless we don't need to worry about that as we're in a unprivileged container already so if we were to try to go ahead and do these steps we'd actually get errors because we're not running with root privileges as it is right now but there is a second command we need to execute for Docker. And what this command is going to do is it's going to add whatever user we're working with to the Docker user group. So we don't have to use the sudo command when issuing all Docker uh, commands to our system, which is really convenient and nice, but we're right now running as our root user. So we're going to need to do some commands to actually go ahead and create that user so we can issue that final command. And the first command we're going to do is add user here on Ubuntu. User add also, I believe, works, but add user is a nice little like utility that takes us through all the steps that's needed and we'll give it a user of the E here. So then we'll press enter. It's gonna create everything, ask us for our new password. We can fill out our passwords. We can hit enter or fill in this information. And then it's gonna ask us if the information is correct. We'll say why, enter, and now we have a new user. Now at this point, we could go ahead and hit the up arrow and I'm going to go ahead and do this because I want to add this group to sudo. So we'll hit the up arrow, which will be add user VE, and then we can hit sudo and press enter. Enter, and that's going to add the VE user to the pseudo user group. Now, again, I mentioned a moment ago that all this command does right here is do a user mat, uh, mod to add a group called Docker to your user. So what we can do right here is actually just select Docker or type Docker 
go back to this command again after we deleted sudo and paste in docker or again type docker and then hit enter now our user is added to that docker group already right out of the box we don't need to issue that second command here because we already did all of those steps with our add user tool you could also log in with that user and run that command and that would be fine. What I'm going to do here though is I'm going to hit exit and you could do this with SU as well. And I'm actually going to log in with the new VE user. And then I'm going to go ahead and disable that root account by entering sudo passwd-l and then I can enter my user password as a sudo permissioned user and you can notice that the password changed so we've actually disabled the root user account now so nobody can use the root user account to do anything on this system they have to know my username and my password in order to log in or whatever other steps i've created like maybe a two-factor authentication code or whatnot for this particular server so with that, we can go ahead and try out Docker. And the way I like to try out Docker is to enter Docker PS. Now PS is the command that just lets us see if we have any containers running. And of course, at this point we shouldn't, and you can see that we don't have anything running. So we know Docker's up and running inside of this LXC container here on Proxmox. All of our steps are done for getting Docker ready to use inside of an LXC container here on Proxmox 8.2. I hope you enjoyed this video and you're ready to start running Docker. Docker is one of my favorite tools when installed on top of Proxmox in this manner for fastly deploying different self-hosted applications here inside of my lab. As always, have a good night and please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to help virtualize everything continue to grow.